guys, welcome back to Basketball Down Under. Today we are talking all about why Kai Soto will be the NBL Rookie of the Year. So the NBL season is coming up to halfway through the season and we can start looking at the end of the year awards. Let's start facing the facts here. Who is getting the most consistent points, most consistent rebounds, most consistent blocks and most consistent minutes? Kai Soda. This kid is just the most consistent out of all the rookies. Now if we have a look around the league, there's a few rookies that can contest Kai for Rookie of the Year. There's Tom Digby from Brisbane Bullets. He's getting about 5 to 10 minutes a game, so he's not getting a chance to do enough to win the Rookie of the Year. There's Matt Kenyon and Sean McDonald from the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers, but these guys, they're just not that good. They're not going to win the Rookie of the Year. There's Ariel Hakpordi from Melbourne United. He's a bucket. He's a great player. He's been in some real Really good form at the recent times and he's a potential for rookie of the year and then in my personal opinion the biggest chance to win rookie of the year in the whole NBL other than Kai Hugo Besson the guard from France is averaging 14 points per game 1.6 assists and 4.2 rebounds on 38.2% from the field. He's been pretty efficient. He has definitely been one of New Zealand's best player behind Yanni Wetzel, and he's the serious contender to win Rookie of the Year. But putting all those guys to the side, we actually have to have a look at Kai Soto and tell you why he's exactly going to win the Rookie of the Year. First of all, like I said, he has been the most consistent, and I know he's not dropping 20 points a game, and he's not getting 10 assists, but he's averaging 7.7 .7 points per game and 4.8 rebounds a game at 54% shooting. Some very efficient numbers for the time that he's getting on the court. Now, I've been saying this for the past couple of videos, Kai is going to get more minutes. It's bound to happen. Isaac Humphreys, one of their starting centers, did get injured a little while ago, and he has got more minutes from that. With Cam Bairstow and Dan Johnson being the two main centers and Kai coming off the bench, he will get more minutes the longer the season goes on, as those centers will get fatigued. And the more minutes Kai gets, the more he's going to capitalize on the opportunity, because look at those numbers. Those are some very solid numbers for like 12 minutes a game. Seven points and five rebounds. He's really doing some work with those numbers. And the biggest thing, like I said in his last game, is his blocks. He's getting a fair few blocks a game. In his last game, he got three blocks against the Cairns Taipans and was just altering all the shots that he could when he was on the court. So being the absolute presence he is on the court, he's a massive shot for Rookie of the Year. Now, you've also got to think in the minds of the NBL, and you've also got to think, what do the NBL like? The NBL are trying to grow at a rapid rate. You know, they need money, they need funding, they need views. Now, who's going to provide more views? The Frenchman who came from a second division French league to the NBL or Kai Soto with a whole country of the Philippines behind him. If the NBL give Kai Soto Rookie of the Year, just think about how good that is for the NBL because they get all the Filipino viewers watching the NBL, seeing how good Kai has been. The other thing is, whoever gets the Rookie of the Year really does boost their draft stock to make the NBA. And if Kai's got that on his resume when making the NBA, well, that leads for more and more people to join the NBL as a pathway to make it to their ultimate goal to the NBA. Hey, but you have to go back to what I just said and look at what's best for the NBL's interest. It's to give it to Kai with the whole country behind him because the viewership, it's just so much better for the NBL if Kai wins it. So overall, I'd love to see Kai secure that Rookie of the Year award. Now, what can he do to secure that award? Well, first of all, stay healthy and play all the games because I'm sure someone else will get injured. We need to see even more productivity from him while he is on the court because that will lead to more minutes. So then he can therefore get more stats. Seven points a game, five rebounds a game. That's solid, but we need to get that up to about 12 points a game and about 7 or 8 rebounds a game. If Kai can keep his numbers consistent and strong, I can guarantee that he will win that NBL Rookie of the Year. And overall, that will keep boosting his draft stock so he can get even higher in the NBA lottery. Looking at Melbourne United's prospect of Ariel Hakpordi, we can see him. He's been playing well. He's averaging 6.8 points and 4.8 rebounds a game, which is similar numbers to Kai, just not quite as good. But the biggest issue with him is he's missed a fair few games with either injury or COVID, where Kai's been more consistent and being able to play more games. Consistency in this league is going to be tough and if you can play the most amount of games due to COVID and injury, you're a great shot to win that Rookie of the Year award. So overall, tossing it up, you can see Kai with the whole country behind him having a very consistent season is very likely to win the Rookie of the Year compared to the Ariel Hakapordi and even Hugo Besson. They're just not bringing the marketing to the NBL that Kai does and that overall leads for the best opportunity for him to win the Rookie of the Year. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends, and I'll catch you later.